Hello friends, welcome to the last and the final part of the Traxler counter attack. In this lecture I am going to cover what you should do when white responded with the move bishop captures f7 and also after knight captures f7 bishop captures f2 instead of taking that bishop white king just run away to the f1 square. Please note that at this point white king goes to the e2 square then it just give the free tempo to the black knight so that cannot be good so the most critical square is king to f1 after this move what is seriously posting a question to the black camp what is going to do about your two major pieces well here the fourth move is queen to e7 and now white has two choices if white capture the bishop first then there comes rook to f8 so now we are attacking that knight and to illustrate how dangerous this position is let me show you one of my base game in this line so here my opponent responded with the move d3 now white cannot casually just develop queen side pieces for example if white plays the move knight to c3 then queen to c5 not only regain the piece but black emerge with winning position so that's why d3 is almost forced here I responded with our one of the trademark move that is the move d5 and once again white has limited choices if white plays the move bishop captures d5 then there comes knight captures d5 and after pawn captures knight we can simply snap off that knight and now we are threatening a checkmate except that white just have to give up the queen after queen to f3 we can snap up the d5 pawn and white queen is a goner so that's why e captures d5 is forced at this position after this we are certainly giving this check and the best move over here is king to e1 after this we are going to take that knight once again we are threatening a checkmate on f2 so the only way to defend this is to play the move queen to f3 afterwards we'll play the move queen to g6 hitting the queen and after queen to g3 now comes very good move that is knight to d4 so you can see almost these moves are forced and right now black has created two threats that is knight captures c2 and rook to f2 which white cannot parry both of them in the game my opponent responded with the move bishop to b3 but after rook to f2 he realized that how bad his position is under the pressure he made a blunder move that is h3 and now I give you a few minutes can you finish the white off okay so it start with the move rook to e2 check and after king to d1 we have the knight to f2 and this will more or less white to give up the queen so that was about king captures f2 the most critical try is knight captures h8 afterwards once again we are going to play our trademark move that is the move d5 so hitting the bishop now white has three possibilities over here the worst one is bishop captures d5 because after this move we are going to simply play the move bishop to g4 and bye bye miss queen <laughs> rather nice the second move white can try is now capturing the bishop at this juncture so white is grabbing all the material and saying black hey what you are up to well there's a saying in chess do not become too greedy and this is exactly the case over here to illustrate how dangerous white position is let me show you one of my game here i responded with the move d captures c4 and my opponent responded with the move knight to c3 so he just want to develop his queen side pieces here I played the move bishop to g4 attacking the queen the queen drops to the even but actually it's a mistake the reason is now I can jump to the d4 square I'm threatening to play knight capture c2 after a long thinking my opponent come up with the move rook to b1 but here I grab the c2 pawn anyways and my opponent responded here with the move queen to f1 so he's attacking now c4 which I defended with the move bishop to e6 he played the move d3 
here I responded very very energetically so I played the move castling on the queen side and my opponent thought that why can't I just disturb the coordination of the black piece so he played the move knight to f7 which at the end turns out as a mistake I played the move knight to g4 check and please note that king to g1 will leads to the checkmate sequence after queen to c5 check so the only good move over here is king to e2 afterwards I give another check that is C captures D3 and once again white response is forced white has to go to the D2 square and now I capture that knight <laughs> and if you look at this position you can clearly see there's a traffic jam on the back rank of the white side and not only that black pieces are so much aggressively placed pressure creates a mistake and that was happened in the game after the move H3 I just played the move queen to g5 and my opponent has to give up the resignation immediately. So that was about king to f2. The best move over here is e captures d5 but after this once again black can play the move knight to d4. I have reached this position many times in my games and mainly three of the try has been done. In the first game, my opponent tried the move knight to c3. I played the move bishop to g4, so attacking the queen. So white has the only reply left that is blocking the file with the move bishop to e2. I capture that bishop and after knight captures bishop, I played a very strong move that is queen to f8. So there are some nasties looming on the f file which white needs to be very very careful. Getting annoyed by that pin, my opponent responded over here with the move h3. But after bishop to h5, I was 100% sure that he's going to play the move g4, which I was waiting for because now I can sacrifice my knight. And after h captures and bishop captures, once again we have the traffic jam scenario on the back rank. This is the worst case because we are threatening a checkmate. After a very long thinking, my opponent played the move d3, but after my next move, that is bishop to e3, his king is a goner. So that is a checkmate. The second move tried over here is the move c3. Once again, we are going to play the move bishop to g4. And now, this time around, white has the only move left, that is queen to a4 check which we are going to block by our knight. It's true that two of the black pieces are hanging right now but white cannot touch either of them. For example, if white takes the move c captures d4 then here comes queen to f6. So once again this familiar trap exists where we are going to checkmate the white king. And please note that d captures e5 doesn't change the scenario because black can simply play the move queen to f4 and the threat remain as it is. Instead of capturing the knight, if white takes the bishop, then this is even worse because now we can give this queen check and after g3 we can give queen to f6 check and after king to e1 we have this wonderful move that is queen to f5. There are some nasty threats are looming. The first obvious one is knight to c2 check and not only that black is also threatening to play the move queen to e4 the best move suggested over here by Fritz is c captures d4 but after this black can play the move queen to e4 check and after king to f2 black queen can simply capture the rook in the corner and yet the threats are not over right now black is threatening to capture the bishop is threatening to capture the h2 and any moment black can castle on the queen side in this game my opponent responded with the move knight to c3 so saving the bishop but after queen to h2 check he casually played the move king to e1 which cost him the game so there is a mate in two first of all queen to g1 check and after the only reply bishop to f1 queen to g3 is a checkmate last but not least at this position white has also captured this bishop but this is just asking for it so here obviously black is going to start with the move knight to g4 check and 
if the king goes to the g3 then queen to g5 is very strong accordingly if the king goes to the g1 then queen to c5 is a very strong move the best move over here is king to e1 after this we are going to play the move queen to f6 so threatening a checkmate the only good way to defend is the move rook to f1 we have another queen check and after g3 we just capture the h2 pawn and now good thing is the g3 is hanging but there is no way white can defend this there is a one game my opponent responded with the move rook to f3 after just one move that is e4 he's just lost the best move over here is the move d3 black can capture the c2 pawn with a check so white has no option but to capture this knight and now black is going to capture this queen black has queen for the three pieces but because the lack of development and miscoordination of the white your computer will definitely give heavy edge to the black camp so with this variations we can easily conclude that king to f1 is a good move but is a rather dull move and we can allow white to capture the rook in the corner but in return we get tremendous attack on the white king it's time to look at bishop captures f7 the third alternative for the white player is to play bishop captures f7 and i think this will be the case for many positional player what they actually want to do is instead of broiling into the knight captures f7 line they just want to be a pawn up and misplace the black king so they can hold on to that pawn and rest of the game well as a traxler you should be more than happy because here you don't need to even sacrifice heavy material still you get a very good position now the first point you should notice is after king to e7 white has to immediately evacuate his bishop because if he play a casual move such as castling at this point which looks very attractive but after the move at 6 white will definitely lose a piece so that's why there are two squares this bishop can go doesn't matter which square the bishop is go our planning of campaign will remain the same so let's say bishop goes to the b3 and now what is indeed threatening the move knight to f7 which to his surprise we are going to allow him via the move d6 so at first sight it looks completely stupid because not only white win the pawn he misplaced our king and now also allowing knight to f7 so it's completely look ridiculous but it contains big surprises let's see what will happen if white plays the move knight f7 well here the black response is force black has to play the move queen to f8 and now as i highlighted by the arrows over here white has try few options now the first obvious move is knight captures h8 well after this there is a mating sequence start with the move bishop captures f2 here the king captures f2 is force because if the king goes to the f1 square then after bishop to g4 the queen is trapped once again so that's not possible that means king captures f2 is force and now we are going to play the move knight captures e4 however white plays his king is not going to survive so for example if king goes to the e3 then we have queen to f2 check and after king captures e4 we have bishop to f5 check and after king to d5 we have checkmate with the move queen to d4 so that's why knight captures h8 is prohibited the second move white can try is the move d3 but after the move d3 black can once again play our typical sacrifice move that is bishop captures f2 and after king captures f2 now we are going to play the move knight to d4 knight to d4 has a very simple idea knight wants to capture the bishop and then captures the knight question is how white is going to stop this plan for example if white foolishly remove the knight let's say it goes to the g5 then after knight captures e4 no matter where the white king is go the mate is on the next move so that's not possible and if white try to be save the bishop via the move bishop to c4 then d5 is extremely strong the third move white can try is the move knight to c3 
but this can hardly describe a good move because once again we can play the move knight to d4 and the idea is very simple we want to capture the bishop and then capture the knight and please note if the bishop goes to the c4 then black can always play the move b5 so accordingly the best move suggested over here is knight captures h8 well now black has a very good sequence which confirms the advantage so here black captured the bishop and after white recapture we play our trademark move that is bishop captures f2 if the king goes to the f1 square then bishop to g4 is a very strong move if now white play the move knight to e2 to save the queen then there comes knight captures e4 and although white can play many moves at this position there is a force mate in 14 moves so you can see how dangerous this position is if white plays one or two inaccurate moves king captures f2 doesn't change the scenario because black is always going to capture the e4 pawn with a double check and mate to follow some of you might wonder hang on why can't just white play the simple move that is castle safen is king and then white has no problem at all what is black going to do about it well here is the answer first black is going to play the move bishop to g4 attacking the queen so queen has to go to the even square and now black plays the move knight to d4 so idea is very much similar black knight wants to capture the bishop and then captures the knight well if that's the case then you may ask the question then why can't white capture the rook what's wrong about it well this is a typical trap where many people has fallen into and you should watch this trap carefully so here black plays a very good move that is queen to c8 now what's the idea of queen to c8 well the first idea is revealed when some of my opponents plays the move c3 just hoping that that knight will go back well here comes the big blow knight to f3 bam so it's a fork so white is obliged to capture that knight and after g captures f3 and bishop captures f3 there is an unstoppable mate is coming up well if not c3 what about if the king moves away so for example if king to h1 then instead of knight to f3 this time the other piece join into the party which is bishop f3 bam bishop is spinning the g2 pawn so now queen to h3 is on the agenda and if white capture this bishop then knight captures f3 there is a hit on the queen so queen has to move and when the queen moves we are going to play the move queen to h3 and then mate on h2 is following so these are some of the wonderful tricks exist if your opponent greedily put knight on f7 finally i like to conclude this section with showing one game where what happens if white employed for example after bishop to d4 and you play the move d6 does not commit knight to f7 but plays a recommended move which is suggested by many books and videos that is the move c3 well against this i'm going to show you one of my own game which will give you a very good idea how to handle this sort of scenarios here i responded with the move queen to e8 and my opponent who was around 2100 rated responded with the obvious looking move that is castle i responded very energetically with the move bishop to g4 and he responded with the move queen to b3 so his idea is to capture the b7 pawn well first i give a nudge to the knight with the move at 6 and now white response is force white cannot capture the b7 pawn if he would have captured the b7 pawn then following sequence will emerge black with a winning position so here black should continue with the move knight captures d5 and after pawn captures black should immediately capture the knight the simple reason is when white regain his peace now comes the very strong move that is queen to h5 so there is a mate threatened on h2 white can continue for one more check that is queen capture c7 but after king to f6 black king is quite safer at this place and now in the view of mate on h2 white has to forcefully play the move h3 afterwards 
any beginner can guess it. Yep, it's bishop capture s3, and even a GM can hardly survive in this sort of position. So that's why at this point he played the accurate move that is knight to e6. But then I raised the complication with the move knight to a5. Now knight captures g7 is technically not working, so that means white queen has to move. He plays the queen on the c2 square. But after this, I played the another strong move that is queen to g6. So now idea is very simple: either bishop to f3 or bishop to h3 will be played on the right time. My opponent responded over here with the move d4. But just to mention, if white plays an inaccurate move such as king to h1, then after knight captures d5, white will simply lose a piece. After the move d4, I captured the bishop. He captured my bishop. and then i created a checkmate threat with the move bishop to f3 he defended with the move g3 and now i captured the knight after the whole sequence black emerged with a clear piece up he was desperate to get his piece back so he played the move knight to d2 i responded with the move bishop to e2 and after rook to e1 i hold on to my piece with the move knight to f4 now if you carefully look at this position white species are coming in each other ways so there is no coordination happening in the white camp my opponent was desperate to get his piece back so he first of all captured the pawn i played the rook to f8 and now he played the move queen to e4 which is a typical mistake happen in the time trouble i give you few minutes over here it's black to play and you need to finish your opponent okay i hope you find this move that is knight to h3 check and after king to h1 we have the winning move that is queen to g4 so now the idea is to play bishop to f3 and if rook captures bishop then queen captures rook and then there is no escape with this we are concluding the wonderful world of the trexler counter attack i hope my analysis has given you enough information to explore the wonderful world of the trexler Before we leave I like to mention one important resource for the Trexler counter attack in case if you want to learn a good theory There is one good chess based DVD by Robert Rees which covers the Trexler attack in detail and also he has suggested some nice lines again the different Italian setup Well thank you for watching this video feel free to like subscribe and comment I'll meet you in my next lecture bye